and I'll merge up these two little vertices. You notice that creates a little uh, quad underneath that I can actually just fill up very quickly as well. Uh, and I'll use this to transition from a lower level of detail of only one face wide on the mouth section to a higher level of detail, which is uh, essentially three edges or three faces wide uh, as I transition into the nostril area. Uh, I can zip these up with a very quick split polygon tool and merge and then just cut right back across it with the split polygon tool as well. Uh, in my case, my append polygon tool was kind of freaking out and didn't want to close up there. So that was kind of a quick workaround you saw me do. Now it looks kind of weird. He's got this coconut nose right now, but we're going to leave that in place and define the upper edge of the nostril by again just using Edit Mesh Extrude and moving my vertices into place essentially one at a time. Quick append there allows me to define the outside edge of the nostril. And another insert edge loop allows me to round that out. Uh, again, I always find that if you are appending, uh, you can append and then reinsert an edge loop much quicker than you can extrude twice and then merge. It's just a sort of fastness of the tools sort of thing. I'm reworking this area just a little bit to relieve some stress on the point that I had created. I deleted that out. Uh, re-merged up some little points and uh, that allows me to make sure that uh, I'm not getting an edge or a vertex that has like six or seven edges coming out of it. Uh, your goal is if you've got uh, spots where multiple edge loops are joining up to make sure that your vertex really doesn't have any more than maybe five edges coming out of it which we refer to as a five point star. Uh, if it has six that can be okay but when you start getting vertices that have like seven or eight edges coming out of it, it creates a lot of strain and stress on that point, especially when it has to animate. And uh, that can be really, really hard on the lifelike quality of the model. So again, appending across, and I'll use my insert edge loop tool here. Uh, I've created a little triangle in this process, but you'll notice by merging up my points there, I was able to zip that down, and I'm going to fix that last remaining triangle in just a minute. By using the split polygon tool, you'll notice I was able to cut the center of the triangle in half, draw it to the middle edge, and it essentially becomes a quad. One of the, I think, the great things about working with triangles, especially if you're near the center line, you know, people will always sort of shy you away from triangles, and, and I'm one of those. Uh, they can be useless additions to the model, especially if you have to smooth. Uh, they create a denser structure. But one of the things about them is that if you've got a triangle on one side of the model, uh, you certainly have a triangle on the other side. And if they're near the center line, they're very, very close together. Uh, two triangles, of course, if they're put together, can become a quad. So if you can manage and find a way to get your two triangles to either come close to each other or use a split polygon tool to cut between them, you can essentially bridge that gap and make two quads. And that's what I had done for that center part of the nose, which is why I was okay, essentially, with leaving my shape as it was. So this nose is getting pretty uh, wrapped up here. I'm now just using the append polygon tool to fill up gaps. I've got an uneven section here with more geometry on the bottom than I do on the top. So I'm gonna have to quickly add some edge loops in just so I can append. Now I've got myself some quads here, but I've got this end gone up above, which is a polygon with, in this case, has about six or seven edges. Uh, I'm gonna have to come in and rework that in just a minute. So delete those edge loops out and uh, I didn't just hit delete there I went to edit mesh and I chose delete edge and vertex uh, whenever you're deleting edges it's usually a good idea to do that that way it doesn't leave little extraneous vertices on the model as well uh, now I'm going to use my split polygon tool to cut a different direction in here and this alternate direction cut has allowed me again to move my points in a quadrilateral form, follow the anatomy a little bit, and it's allowed me to make sure that I've got 
um, all of my points and all my faces as quads. So that kind of gives us the base of the nose. And what I'm doing now is I'm noticing that in the photos, the nose has more of a triangular shape than what I actually sort of creased in. So I'm trying to re-reference that strong triangular shade increasing that we see in the photos. And that really gets my nose pretty much set. And the front of my face is really moving along. A quick double click on that edge loop allows me to select my inside of the nostrils. And a edit mesh extrude allowed me to extrude back in. Uh, I continue just extruding here. Uh, I can use the hotkey G to repeat my last action, which allows me to very quickly continue on without having, without having to get that option again. Uh, and I'll continue extruding up and in, just so you can't really see up there anymore, uh, into the nostrils. And I'll do a mesh fill hole, and then just split across that to make it quads. And if I've got an extra little triangle in there or something, not really going to matter all that much. Soften my normals. And now I've got my eyes, nose, and mouth pretty much set. Now getting the face is undoubtedly the hard part, but it's really just sort of a fraction of the rest of the head. We still have the rest of the back of the head, the neck, the throat, uh, top of the head, all of that to do. And we'll be getting to that shortly. Uh, but again, as I'm, as I'm working here, sometimes, as I said, I find areas that... Uh, don't quite look right once you start putting other things in proportionally. And here I'm back in on the corners of the lips. Uh, like I said, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice to really get those into place. Here my overhang now starts to feel like it was a little bit too developed. So uh, we're going to sort of push these points until, again, they're working. And I'm using this low camera angle to help me see things that I don't think really could see in just the sort of uh, standard straight ahead view. Looks like I had an extra face in there, too, just cleaning that up. I'm not sure exactly how that got in there, but uh, just double-checking through your model, making sure you don't have any to, uh, topological errors, uh, always, always recommended. So here again, using the Append Polygon tool and the Insert Edge Loop tool allows me to very quickly jump across a section and then split into that. I'm even working upside down here on the face just because it's quicker than rotating my camera back. Uh, and I can quickly append across and fill those up. Again, I think that's much quicker than extruding out and then having to merge. Uh, if, you, if you do those little steps, you can save tons of time in your modeling process. So we're going to build out the uh, cheek here a little bit, make sure I've got things set. And one of my primary goals here is to make sure that numerically uh, the number of divisions I have sort of matches up from side to side. Uh, that way, again, I can make these really quick, easy cuts and then append between them. What I'm looking for right now is there's a very strong shading contour in the photo. And by pulling my edge loops to sort of match that, I know that my geometry is going to be in a correct position. So there's the lower part of my chin. 